Many societies are growing more diverse. In Germany, people now come from all over the world to study and to work. Lots of companies are hiring people from a wider range of backgrounds. Companies are looking for diversity, but for us that doesn't mean primarily diversity among staff based on visible characteristics. It's more about the creativity, experience, knowledge and skills they can contribute. People from more than 60 countries work at Henkel headquarters. And there are sound business reasons why so many nations are represented. The company sells body care products and detergents all over the world. And people who come from Asia or the Middle East know best what their compatriots want to buy. Interesting is that actually when people come from different backgrounds, different ways of working, they bring with them a lot of expertise from different markets. Henkel has launched an image campaign to celebrate the diversity it promotes and addresses. A while ago, Henkel developed a shampoo specifically for women in Muslim societies. We asked, what does someone who hides her hair under a cloth all day need in terms of special care? Do we have to adapt the formula? Then we launched the product on those markets. That never would have happened if it had just been a group of Germans sitting around discussing what to do. German universities are also promoting diversity. Anita Benedict Emanuel is in her sixth semester at the University of Duisburg-Essen. She's part of a program that takes on school pupils from non-academic backgrounds who want to study and accompanies them through their time at the university mentoring them along the way. This benefits young people from German and immigrant families. Anita is the first member of her family to go to university. Her parents are from Sri Lanka. My parents weren't very familiar with the education system here, and even when my teachers tried to explain it, it still wasn't very clear. But luckily the program gave me the information I needed. And the counselors here at the university told us about the various courses of study we could take. That was really helpful. For many young people from immigrant backgrounds in Germany, getting ahead depends on getting help. Many don't finish high school and only around 10% pursue higher education. So the university also offers tutoring for school children. Immigrant families often do not speak German at home. Yet command of the language is a prerequisite for success. Six years ago, Mariam Fakiri and her family fled to Germany from Afghanistan. She wants to become an engineer or architect. It was hard at first because I didn't speak the language and everything was so foreign to me. And you hear people say you'll never make it. But by being in this program with extra tutoring and help from teachers and friends who really motivated me, I realized I can make it. Every day around 300 youngsters come here for tutoring. And the number of requests far outstrips the number of available slots. We see a lot of kids with a lot of potential. Then they tell us how their schools deal with them, and it's pretty shocking. Two other factors also play a role. The first is that they don't get any support at home. Their parents think they don't stand a chance. And second, they often have deficits in their knowledge of German. So, harnessing diversity is all about tapping potential, whatever a person's cultural or ethnic background. Over the past decade, some German companies have signed up to a diversity charter. In it, they commit to creating work environments free of bias. There are six dimensions described in the charter's list of voluntary commitments. The first is sex, so men and women. And then there's age. We usually talk about the five generations of people active in working life. Then there's nationality and ethnic origin, religion and worldview, sexual orientation and identity, and finally, disability. 
The goal is to give every employee the same opportunities. And if promoting diversity is also good PR, so much the better.